Hello, I'm Molly Thompson, and you are very welcome to visit my downtown Charleston garden. It's a very typical garden, primarily outdoor living space as an addition to the house. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Okay, the house itself dates from 1768 or 9, as does the Miles Bruton house. Some of the same people worked on both houses, but they are dramatically different. The piazzas, which is where we are now, were added about 1800. The floor of this one is reclaimed cypress from a dock in Wilmington, North Carolina, and the Cape Fair River. It's cypress, and the color variation is a result of weathering when it was a dock. Uh, the door is two panels, Greek Revival, because the stair hall was rebuilt in the 1830s. But we have on the piazza, we have several things of interest. The joggling board, which is an 18th century exercise machine documented by Bob Barry in 2003. I have copies of the article for you. We have uh, the screen, which is a sh shield for wind and rain or sun, or privacy. And we have the planters hanging. They are, they are hand wrought iron. They were made in Vermont, I believe, and they were, uh, my husband brought them home one of his few forays into gardening. There was a 20 year gap. And then one day he showed up with these planters and announced that each would have a different mint in it, and therefore one could get one's drink of choice from the kitchen or the bar, and then one's mint of choice to suit the libation. Um, the door at the end of the piazza is probably, we guess, the original door into the house. But it's still the door into the house because Charleston Gardens and Piazzas are simply outdoor living spaces. And that is the point of this garden entirely, is to be outdoor living space. And we use it that way all the time. Okay, and this is the Charleston model of the Robinson Steel Fountain. Robinson Steel is located in Alabama. They did the big fountain in the uh, Mills House courtyard. And we had to wait for this one for six months because Robinson Steel was doing the cast iron trimmings for Raffles Hotel in Singapore, which is rather nice. Uh, anyway, and it is surrounded by what we think is the only puzzle maze on the peninsula. You see there are eight points designated by the miniature box. Those are the points of the Maltese cross. There's a start in that far corner and a start on this corner over here. There's about starts and stops. You have to go from one to the other getting all eight points of the cross and you must obey the directions in the pathways. If you look at that pathway, right in the middle you see an arrow formed by the brick. That's one way. And there are other places over on this one. We have two bricks crossing the pathway you cannot step over that. So you have walls and arrows. You may not cross the walls. You must follow the arrows. And you must get all eight points of the Maltese cross. The computer says, my husband's computer says, that that all possible solutions, you would have walked 10 million miles. I have not tested that theory. I have no intention of testing that theory, but you're welcome to try it if you'd like. One of the interesting things that is a tiny detail but very useful are plant stabilizers. Some 20 years ago, my landscaper and uh, ironmonger, Rick Averett, invented what we call pot, pot stabilizers. It's a cross with a spike. The spike goes into the drain hole of the pot and the, the broader base keeps the pot from blowing over. We use long toms, and we have at various times before that, 
lost maybe six of them because they're top heavy. Wind catches them, blows over, pot's gone. Mm -hmm. So the state, and we have two sets, one for uh, one set of four for other pots in the garden. But they save us a great deal in pot replacement. <laughs> Another plant of interest is this rose bush. Uh, most local master gardeners know Lucille McLennan, who is now 99, I think, has an amazing wildflower garden and a very large reputation as an important gardener. She is a friend, and some 30 years ago, she was given two rose bushes taken from cuttings from the Gallier House in New Orleans and she very kindly gave us one of them. Most of our roses are noisettes from the class of roses developed here in Charleston by the Noisette brothers. This one, however, is from Lucille and the Gallier House. It is a polyantha, and it is Cecile Bruner, which is the sweetheart rose. And it is a one-bush jungle. Periodically, we take what I refer to as a metaphysical machete to it, to get it under control. It's about due for some trimming now, but it grows with great enthusiasm and gives us many roses all year long. From this angle, you have, can see the entire house, which is nowhere near as large as it looks. It's one room deep. It is a typical Charleston single, which means it's a center hall colonial with a gable end on the street, and porches added on either the south or west side. In this case, it's the south side. So we have the street door, which is the door into the house, which includes the garden. The garden is simply a, a part of the living space and is used that way constantly. So we have the original single with the 1800 piazzas, a connector, we have the stucco, which we built in the 20th century, and then the kitchen house, which also dates from the 4th, 1770. And when we came in, the earthquake had knocked down a lot of the top. Because of a bad infestation, we wound up replacing the roof and we restored the original pitch, which involved adding 14 feet to the chimney. But the house has grown. The, the stair hall in the main house is actually an internal building because in the 1830s, people got tired of the uncomfortable stairs and put quite comfortable stairs all the way through the house to the top. Stairs and risers are all the same. And it also is built like an elevator shaft. It has its four timbers and you have this building within a building with a staircase inside of that. It's, it's rather interesting and has caused us some difficulties with plumbing and other out of sight things. There are several items of interest in the back garden. The mounting block under the banana tree we dug up from this back garden. We didn't find much. We could not find any good archaeological evidence of a prior garden, although the round bushes, the boxwood, were planted about 1940, but in different places. They are from Mount Vernon. They are uh, descended from George Washington's boxwood, which is rather nice. On the back wall, as you go along where there's an arch for roses, which was made also by Rick Averett, as well as the bench under it. And the bench is flanked by capstones that we found cisterns under the garages. We only got one capstone, but they were beautiful 10 foot cube cisterns under the garage. As you come around, we have holly trees anchoring the end, but then along the kitchen house, we have what I think of as the South of France terrace, characterized with citrus and other edibles. We have lemon, calamondin orange, Persian lime, key lime, kaffir lime, and then we have the herbs, including bay, bay leaves, a little, a little bay tree, and seasonal herbs and other plants. We also have some of our found pots in this area. It's much less formal, and it's an area that is planned for guests in the kitchen house to be able to relax, have lunch, drink tea, whatever. One of our interests is 
plants that are a little peculiar or have historic significance. And here we have two varieties of Tritoscantia, the purple leaves and then the rather bearded looking leaves. There's a third variety in the pots on the posts of the driveway entrance known as Wandering Jew. But those, th those are three easily available plants of the Tritoscantia group. Tritoscantia is named for the, the John's Tritoscant, father and son. John Tritoscant, the elder, was the first naturalist to travel to collect specimens for his king. He went to Holland and Spain, and his son traveled further. They, uh, between them, managed to accomplish a museum of curiosities which upon the death of the younger one was given by his executor to Oxford University as the core of the Bodleian, named for the executor, not the Tratoscans. We have the same situation with Clemson University in South Carolina. Clemson is located on Fort Mill, which was John Calhoun's home, home, home territory, and he wanted a university there. His son-in-law accomplished that through the legislature, but somehow it wound up with the son-in-law's name, and that's how Clemson is Clemson and not Calhoun. This is the cannonball that we found in the back garden when we were digging to plant various things. We think it's 19th century, and uh, Charleston is the most bombarded city in the country, you know. Two wars, the Revolution and the Civil War. We have a a uh, hole in a uh, wainscoting on the third floor that we believe is 18th century because it's a smaller hole. But this one we think is 19th century. And it was, it was an interesting find. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed your visit to this downtown Charleston garden. And I hope you appreciated the fact that our gardens are part of our homes. They're simply the outdoor part of our homes but they're very personal and we hope you enjoy them and I hope you enjoy other ones as while you're here.